is a uh, very important and hot subject. Uh, it's uh, important uh, whenever you have a patient with a trauma, you go for the ABCs. Tamam? Airway, breathing, circulation. These are the most important thing as a GP. Once you are done with that, then you can come and, you know, check other parts of the body that are injured and you can work accordingly. Tamam? Hala, el, uh, a trauma to the eye can be divided into two parts. We have penetrating trauma and perforating. Penetrating means that the entrance and the exit is the same or we have an entrance without an exit. Tamam? Perforating means that the entrance and the exit are different. Usually seen in gun uh, or bullet injuries. Uh, hala, uh, regarding the prognosis, it's very important. Tamam? Usually trauma to the eye is classified according to zones. We have uh, grade one, or let's say zone one, where uh, the cornea is involved, maybe the lens with uh, nothing else. Uh, zone two, usually the cornea and the sclera, but not involving the aura serrata or the retina. Uh, zone three, you have involvement of the retina, whether the uh, perforation is behind or it's, 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 you know, beyond five millimeter from the limbus. Okay, this, this area is called zone three. Taban, why do we um, divide them into zones? Because uh, it's important for the prognosis. Usually zone one and zone two carry a good prognosis. Uh, zone three carry a, re uh, a bad prognosis because retina is involved uh, in the injury. Now, once you have a uh, patient with, uh, with a trauma, uh, it's important to, uh, let's say, examine the eye and you examine also the uh, surrounding structures. So, uh, let's, so usually trauma can involve the eyelid, terminal eyelid hematoma, laceration, canalicular problem laceration, orbital blowout fractures, uh, also uh, we, have, we will discuss anterior and posterior segment uh, you know, blunt injuries, complications of uh, penetrating injury, we will discuss it inshallah and how to manage those. طيب, there's another classification which is blunt versus uh, sharp, uh, let's say, injury, sharp tool injury. Blunt injury means that it's a blunt object which will cause injury to the eye or surrounding structures. They a rock, um, for example, a rock, a fist, uh, they, these are really uh, blunt injuries. Uh, sharp, uh, for example, a pen, a pencil, a, uh, a knife, these are, these can cause uh, sharp or penetrating injury. Tamam? Um, هلا اللي مهم برضو كمان for example eyelid hematomas as you can see this is chemosis تمام chemosis or raccoon eye raccoon eye or panda eye it can be due to hematoma of the eyelid itself or hematoma or let's say a leaked blood from the base of the skull تمام sometimes basal skull fracture can cause a panda eye or raccoon eye uh, in the uh, if uh, or it can be the direct injury itself uh, causing this problem without the presence of a basal skull fracture. For raccoon eye, this is the differential diagnosis, either basal skull fracture or direct trauma. Uh, orbital roof fracture also uh, on orbital floor fracture uh, can cause also hematoma, the subconjunctival hemorrhage. As you can see here, and uh, usually uh, they have, and usually the patient will uh, present with the following. Uh, blowout fracture, the mechanism, for example, a squash ball or a tennis ball uh, or a fist, it will suddenly increase the intraorbital pressure. And the sudden increase in intraorbital pressure will uh, be, let's say, um, uh, managed by the 
uh, defensive mechanism that God created uh, inside our uh, our orbit, which is the sudden opening of the orbital floor or orbital wall uh, in the sinus. This will immediately release the pressure inside the orbit, protecting the eye and the eye structures. Tamam. For the most commonly affected in blowout fracture is the orbital floor. Sometimes the medial wall also can break uh, in order to uh, improve the, let's say, decrease the pressure furthermore. طيب خلينا إذا نحكي الآن على signs of orbital floor blowout fracture. Uh, the first is enough thermos. The eye will be um, will sink inside the orbit. This is due to an increase in the volume of the orbit. They can عامل three يعني wall decompression. Okay, so uh, part of the fat will herniate into the uh, inferior wall. Sometimes even the muscles, the the inferior rectus will herniate through the wall, and uh, sometimes what is more commonly which happens is that the inferior wall doesn't shatter, it doesn't break down into pieces, but rather there is a momentarily, let's say, for a moment, just for a moment, the, oh, the uh, inferior wall opens and then it closes back. Tamam? Uh, when it opens and then it closes back, it can entrap part of the muscle, tamam? or part of the tissue, the, uh, the fat. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> uh, the um, the problem is that if you have an entrapped muscle, you have two important problems. The first thing is that the muscle will no longer relax at full length, so the patient the patient will have problems with up gaze. The uh, the muscle is not relaxing. And the patient, once he's looking up, he'll start to see the plopia. Sometimes the plopia can be in primary position, or sometimes, if severe enough, it can be in inferior gaze. Uh, another thing, it can cause valsalva manu. Uh, it can cause a vasovagal uh, attack. It can cause a vasovagal attack. How how does it, uh, how does this happen? Um, we have something called cardio. Ocular reflex, cardio ocular reflex. If you have a direct hit on the eye or the muscles are stretched enough, uh, this can cause vagal stimulation. And the patient will start to feel dizzy, hypotensive, and uh, sometimes even uh, no uh, noxious and he might vomit. This is ocular cardiac reflex. تمام. And ocular cardiac reflex is what, uh, let's say, oh, if the patient, for example, feels hypotensive when he looks up, this is an indication for, for emergent surgery. This is an indication for emergent surgery. So, uh, patients with blowout fracture, emergency or oh, emergent surgery, should we do them? What's the indication? The presence of a vasovagal reflex. Uh, whenever the patient is looking up, he faints, you have to rush into surgery. Second, the presence of diplopia in primary or in down gaze, you need to fix that within two or three weeks, uh, which is emergent, but which is uh, urgent, but not an, em uh, but not an emergency. Uh, and finally, for cosmetic reasons, you know, people, they don't like to have an, an ophthalmic eye, tamam? Uh, it's somewhat disfiguring, uh, people might not uh, like it. Usually we fix that within two or three months after surgery, after, after trauma. So with the blowout fractures in the old days, we used to do uh, this nice follow-up, Lehuelis and his chart. Uh, we just rely on our uh, clinical diagnosis, but in the old days, uh, this can be a nice follow-up tool. The uh, best way to investigate those patients is, the, uh, is to do a CT scan. 
So with a CT scan, we never do an MRI because we don't know the patient and it's an emergency. So you, you look at the uh, inferior wall. If it's open, there's some more oil drop sign. Okay, an oil drop sign. As you can see, there, there is tissue inside in the inferior uh, part or, or let's say coming from the inferior orbital wall. This is the most common. In Fatah, the orbital wall, and then it closed back, entrapping some of the tissue. But, uh, this is a medial blowout fracture where the patient actually, whenever he sneezes, uh, the eye closes because of orbital emphysema or subcutaneous emphysema. The air from the nose will pass through the uh, medial sin the, uh, the ethmoidal sinuses and it will pass uh, to the uh, orbit. Um, and it's one of the indications of treating this patient. Now we will talk about blunt trauma complications. So, uh, blunt trauma can cause high fema, high fema, which is blood in the anterior chamber. So, blood in the anterior chamber, uh, usually it's self-limiting. Uh, we don't um, um, self-limiting. We just ask the patient to uh, stay at bed. Sometimes, um, if he if he can lie 45 degrees, uh, this can help the blood to stay down. And not affect all the part, all parts of the trabecular mesh work. We give them as well uh, topical uh, steroids and cycloplegic, uh, in order uh, cycloplegics like uh, pentolate, in order to um, uh, lower down the pain, the, the uh, you know to decrease the pain. Um, high fema. Uh, can cause an increase in intra. Uh, ocular pressure, that's why uh, sometimes we combine them with anti glucose medications. Uh, rarely uh, we need to rush them and do anterior chamber washout. In cases of uh, total high FEMA, uh, unresolving high FEMA within five days, uh, if the patient has uh, sickle thalassemia or sickle cell disease, uh, those patients are more prone for complications and we tend uh, to hurry up to clear up the uh, the bleeding maybe uh, earlier um, and uh, some of those medications are forbidden to be given in sickle thalassemia and sickle thar such as uh, dorzolamide uh, astazolamide we never actually uh, give them you know give uh, gamu yani give them uh, to sickle cell anemia or sickle, uh, sickle cell anemia. Okay, sphincteric rupture or sphincteric tear, if you look closely here at the, um, at the pupil, you'll see some small nicks. This is the circular muscle which is opened due to the blunt trauma. I read the dialysis where the iris is separated from the ciliary body. And you can see the posterior part. This is the uh, this is the lens, the man, and these are the zonules. Uh, Vosius ring. It's just an imprint of the iris on the lens. Okay, basme. iris on the lens. Some of the pigments are still stuck there. Sunflower cataract. Sunflower cataract is a very important sign that you have to look for. And usually uh, it is seen in teenagers and children, and it's a sign of uh, child abuse. Why? Because sunflower cataract doesn't happen unless you have severe rocking of the nucleus inside the lens, okay? And separation of the cortex from the nucleus. It's associated with retinal detachment because of the, of the trauma, the cataract because of the trauma. Uh, or, and sometimes even subluxation of the lens. Lens subluxation also is one of the uh, common signs of child abuse. However, uh, uh, this 
can be it can happen because of many other diseases for example marfan syndrome lysinemia el hardanlos um uh, syndrome so we have uh, quite few syndromes that can cause lens subluxation hemocystinuria so uh, these these can cause lens subluxation along with uh, you know that can be mistaken for child abuse or trauma tamam so there are other causes of subluxation other than trauma twice angle recession tamam angle recession mish hanfout ktir aliha bas hi separation within the uh, ciliary body the circular and the uh, long, long uh, muscles they separate from each other we rupture globe hi uh, total opening and rupture of the globe tamam hello برضه كمان في انابوزيري سيجمنت كومبليكيشنز اوف ذا اوف بلانت انجري فور اكزامبل كوموشو ريتني كوموشو ريتني از ا فورم اوف كاونتر كوب ليتس سي انجري وات ذا مينينج اوف كاونتر كوب مينز ذات ذا انجري از ات ون بليس بوت يو هاف ذا افكت اون ذا اذر بليس اون انذر اون انذر بليس اللي هي لايك وات هابن يا اي ثينك يو توك ذات ان يور نيورولوجي كورس So there is wrong, uh, let's say, shaking of the photoreceptors. This will cause edema of the photoreceptors. As you can see here, now edema of the photoreceptors can resolve alone. And uh, usually it doesn't need any treatment. Now the visual prognosis depends on the injury, Sarah. Most of them, they go peaceful, but some they can cause uh, problems of vision like central scotomas or sometimes some of them they can convert into macular holes choroidal rupture choroidal rupture and hemorrhage can happen secondary to uh, opening of the brooks membrane opening and a sudden uh, blood bleeding in the uh, small and large vessel layer of the choroid Uh, the problem is that new vessels will start to emerge from that uh, and the patient will have uh, problems of uh, vision which is more or less permanent avulsion of uh, uh, vitreous base or some more retinal dialysis retinal dialysis is here it's different from ret from retinal detachment retinal detachment uh, as dr fawad described previous in the previous lecture he talked about separation of the two embryonal origins صح حكى لك اللي هو الانر اند ذا اوتر لاير اللي هو البوتنشال سبيس which separated اللي هم separation of the photoreceptors from the retinal pigment epithelium هنا مختلف retinal dialysis is the tangential separation of the retina total retina اللي هم the two layers the retinal pigment epithelium and your sensory retina from the ciliary body تمام ف it's a tangential separation مش vertical separation تمام اللي هم two embryonal origins لا طبعا retinal dialysis is not an emergency تمام انا I've been a uh, uh, a resident one day and I called my my senior طبعا Retinal dialysis, we can wait for it. We can wait on him for two weeks. Don't worry. And we all went back to our beds. So uh, this is a, a nice case that you really need to focus on. Bardo uh, equatorial tears, macular holes, optic neuropathy also can be a cause of uh, blunt injury. Type. In this optic neuropathy, optic neuropathy, the optic nerve. is supplied by the pial blood vessels these are small fine blood vessels from the pia uh, of the uh, <coughs> of the dura tamam from the pia and from the pia of the uh, of the meninges taban hadola they are all vertical on the nerve if the nerve is rocked in a very bad way Uh, those pile vessels might shear they might all be cut so devoiding the blood supply of the optic nerve will cause optic neuropathy tamam 
And usually they will start to have progressive visual loss over one to two weeks. And there is no treatment for such cases. ترى مهمة بالنسبة للأوبتيك نيوروباثي إحنا ليش ما بنعطي دائما تقرير قطعي دائما إحنا بالإنجري أو بالتروما وبتخيل دكتور فواز بوافقني الكلام إنه ما بنعطي تقرير قطعي بالوهلة الأولى قد شو ما يكون الإنجري نعطي تقرير مبدئي بعدين بتعطي تقرير نهائي maybe two or three months later because you don't know what surprises you might face it's a very important medical legal issue هذا الكلام إحنا بنعطيكم Yeah, so that you understand, you know, sometimes you sign a paper and uh, it can really get you into trouble. فكر مليون مرة قبل ما تحط اسمك أو خدمك على إشي. Complications of penetrating trauma. <coughs> Now, penetrating trauma, uh, you can uh, have a flat anterior chamber due because the balloon has uh, already deflated. You can see uh, part of the uvea cut out, damage of the lens, cataract, as you can see here, vitreous hemorrhage, blood in the posterior chamber, retinal detach is very common, and even you can see endophthalmitis. Endophthalmitis, which is a bacterial inflammation of the eye or the uvea. تمام؟ وطبعا هذه البيكتشر this picture is very common I usually uh, يعني bring it in the exam differential diagnosis of uh, empyema or uh, uh, hypopian or pus in the anterior chamber uh, hypopian اللي هم ايش uveitis endophthalmitis تمام و um, uh, طبعا uveitis can be either infected or uh, rheumatological origin. طبعاً, uh, this is a, an end of thermitis post cataract. Post cataract. And, but trauma also can cause uh, end of thermitis because we don't know. Some people are injured with, uh, you know, a, a steel, dirty matter. Uh, um, some of those uh, hypopian might be sterile. تمام. Others uh, might be, uh, you know, they can carry the organism with them. Management of uh, foreign body inside the eye, يعني uh, هي vitrectomy, and you have to remove the uh, the uh, foreign body inside the eye. طبعا uh, sometimes some inert material might stay there for. Millions, of, you know, for uh, let's say uh, for many years without uh, any problem, like silica, for example. We have uh, an Egyptian um, uh, guy who had a foreign body rock inside the eye. It's a very small piece, actually. It stayed there for around 13 years. It was a case report. Uh, reported uh, maybe last year. The year before. Uh, grading uh, now uh, going to chemical injuries. Chemical injuries, uh, if you have a person with, uh, uh, you know, subjected to hybex, uh, any uh, corrosive material, whether it's an alkali or an acid, the first thing that he has to do is to rush and wash the eye. Wash, wash, wash. You ask them to wash for 10 minutes or 20 minutes. Um, and even put the eye uh, under the tap, and it's very, uh, it's not important what type of water you're using. Tap water will be fine. Just clean the area and decrease the uh, corrosive concentration as much as you can. Now, regarding prognosis, this depends on the how much limbal stem cells are uh, um, are affected by that corrosive. If the um, if, uh, if the um, limbal cells or limbal ischemia is less than one third, this is a good prognosis. If it's more than one third, this is poor prognosis usually. And we mean by limbal stem cells those cells at the limbal area that produce the epithelium of the cornea. So 
So uh, if they are affected, this will really um, cause corneal melting, as you can see here in the third picture, and uh, it will end up with perforation. So uh, at the ER, the patient comes to you, you do copious irrigation, you give them steroids, uh, topical steroid will be fine, topical antibiotics, also you give ascorbic acid. I uh, combine with uh, oral citric acid. It will inhibit the uh, collagenase. Also topical and systemic tetracycline might also inhibit the collagenase and improve the outcome uh, in, the, in chemical injuries. These are uh, some of the cases of chemical injury. This is Boston keratoplasty uh, uh, being total burn of the uh, of the limbal area. Uh, you can see simpliferon, simpliferon, the palpebral and the palpebral conjunctiva are all connected together. And, and uh, this is um, corrosion of the uh, erosion of the eyelid along with the cornea. Uh, and everything is stuck together. So uh, this really concludes the trauma. Thank you so much for listening. Uh